we have a relatively significant trade to talk about today. This move actually happened late last night and I was going to make a video on it right away, but by the time I would have recorded, edited, and uploaded it, it would have been like midnight my time. So I figured it was a better idea to just save it for today and pair it with another piece of news. So that's what's on the table for this video. First, we're going to talk about the Ryan Graves trade that took place last night. And then a little bit later on in the video, we're going to be talking about some interesting news regarding Kirill Kaprizov and his contract negotiations with the Minnesota Wild. So first, let's Let's break down the trade the Colorado Avalanche sent defenseman Ryan Graves to the New Jersey Devils in exchange for prospect Mikhail Maltsev and a 2021 second round pick. Now before I say anything else, let me just say this, I think this is a great trade and makes a ton of sense for both sides. First looking at this move from the point of view of the Colorado Avalanche, moving Ryan Graves right now was the right decision because they were likely just going to lose him in the Seattle expansion draft anyways. Colorado is more than likely going to go with the seven forwards and three defensemen format, and they would have obviously protected Kale McCarr, Sam Gerrard, and Devin Tays ahead of Ryan Graves. Now, yes, of course, they could have went with the four forwards and four defensemen format and protected Graves, but then they would have risked losing a forward like Andre Burakovsky, so again, I think this was definitely the right move. Getting assets in return for a player that you know you're likely going to lose for nothing, it's a pretty simple concept. It's a no-brainer of a move for the Avalanche, and the assets that they got in return are pretty solid as well. Mikel Maltsev is a 23 year old prospect. He was a fourth round pick by the Devils in the 2016 NHL draft and he did play 33 games in the NHL this past season, had six goals and nine points in those games. Probably doesn't project to make the Avalanche lineup next season. I'm sure Colorado doesn't view him as like a big part of the future or anything like that, but hey, you never know. He did show some impressive flashes of skill this past season with New Jersey for sure. And another aspect of this trade that really helps with the Avs right now is the fact they free up some cap space. It's not a lot. Ryan Graves' cap hit is only a little over 3.1 million, but it's something. And when you think about the current situation between Colorado's captain and unrestricted free agent Gabriel Landeskog and the Avalanche and their contract negotiations, I actually made an entire video on that yesterday. You can go check that out if you have not already. But let's say hypothetically the Avs and Landeskog are $2 million apart in terms of what Landeskog wants and what Colorado is offering. If that's the case or anything close to it, then the little bit of cap space they freed up from this trade could be huge. So those are my reasons as to why I love this trade for the Colorado Avalanche. Now let's talk about this trade from the point of view of the New Jersey Devils acquiring Ryan Graves. The Devils are not a good defensive team and it's been that way for a couple of seasons now. This past season they gave up a ton of shots against per game. They were also I think fourth worst in the league in terms of goals against per game. If they want to start being a competitive team they need to acquire players, defensemen especially, who are good defensively. A lot of the defensemen on the Devils are not good defensively at all. P.K. Subban isn't good defensively, neither is Will Butcher. Damon Severson is better defensively than those guys but he is still a defenseman who's known more for his offense. Ty Smith, you can put in that category as well. Early on in his career, he's more so known as an offensive defenseman. Ryan Graves is exactly the type of defenseman that this New Jersey Devils blue line needed. Graves is very good defensively. He has been in each of the past two seasons. He has an okay offensive game. He doesn't have a great shot. He does like to shoot the puck a lot, but he misses the net a ton. That's definitely one of his flaws. Basically, what I'm trying to say is he's very good defensively, and I guess I would say he's mediocre offensively. He's certainly not a black hole offensively from the blue line. Like, he can get the puck up the ice. He's just not the type of defenseman who's going to get, you know, 40 to 50 points in a season. But that's okay. That's not what the New Jersey Devils need. They need a defenseman who can help keep the puck out of their own net and suppress shots against. And I think Ryan Graves can definitely do that. And also, Graves is only 26 years old. This is a player who I fully expect to be a part of the Devils blue line for the foreseeable future, especially when you consider the fact they gave up a second round pick and a decent young player to bring him in. So those are my thoughts on the trade. Like I said at the start of the video, I think it makes a ton of sense and overall it's just a really solid trade for both teams. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say though, so be sure to let me know your thoughts on the deal down below in the comment section. Who do you think won and why? So that's the first part of the video. Now let's talk about the other piece of news I wanted to go over and it's about Kirill Kaprizov and his contract negotiations with the Minnesota Wild. He's an RFA currently. According to Michael Russo, he said this on the Daily Faceoff Rundown podcast, Kirill Kaprizov has reportedly turned down an eight-year contract from the Minnesota Wild with an annual cap hit of $9 million. The total value of that contract would be $72 million. Reports are that Kaprizov wants a shorter term deal in the four to five year range because he sees himself as a 10 million to 11 million dollar player in the future. This is insane from both points of view in my opinion from Kirill Kaprizov himself and the Minnesota Wild. Now I'm definitely not trying to say that signing Kaprizov to that contract would be a mistake but 
holy has anybody ever gotten offered that kind of money and that amount of term after playing just one NHL season? And this year wasn't even a normal full NHL season. Kaprizov only has 55 games of NHL experience and Minnesota has offered him $72 million over eight years. Again, I'm not saying that would be a mistake by Minnesota, I just don't think that that has ever happened before. It doesn't even matter though because apparently Kirill Kaprizov turned it down, which I think is even more insane than the fact Minnesota offered it to him in the first place. And you can kind of see where Kaprizov is coming from, the fact that he probably wants, you know, like a four or five year deal that walks him straight to unrestricted free agency when he's, you know, 28, 29 years old in the middle of his prime where he would just get an enormous contract, I'd imagine. He's definitely betting on himself, that's for sure, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but there's definitely a lot of risk involved like imagine if he suffers some really bad career altering injury throughout the next four years or something obviously we don't want that to happen but it is a possibility i don't know i just think it's absolutely mind-blowing that a player would pass up a guaranteed 72 million dollars across the next eight years after playing just 55 nhl games again nothing wrong with betting on yourself but the whole situation is kind of just mind-blowing to me i'm really interested to see what type of contract kaprizov actually does end up signing with the wild i remember earlier in the offseason actually i think it was while the playoffs were still going on there was those reports coming out about Kaprizov potentially going back to Russia if he doesn't get the type of contract that he wants. I didn't even bother making a video on that when it happened because he's not going back to Russia. He's staying in the NHL. I think that's just kind of a marketing tactic. It's leverage to get more money to get the type of contract that he wants. I guess we'll see what happens. I'm interested to hear what you guys think though. What type of contract do you think Kaprizov will end up signing? Do you think he's going to get what he wants and, you know, sign in that four to five year range and walk himself straight to unrestricted free agency and then really cash in big? And also let me know if you guys think Kaprizov is crazy for turning down a guaranteed 72 million after his rookie season and do you think the wild are crazy for offering it to him in the first place i'm just fascinated by this whole situation honestly